So this is what I would consider a decent little snow where I live. A couple inches, right? Something that will look pretty but not last long. That's good. So because it's so cold this week, I think it's around 25 degrees, minus 2 degrees Celsius, somewhere right around in there, and I haven't been feeling the best in the world for the last two weeks, I want to get this place insulated, finish the doors obviously, get some of my lights hung up, catch up on some of the things that I've just gotten behind on in the shop, so nothing huge this week, just trying to take it easy, get some things done in here and make forward movement, even if I don't feel like it. So no reason to go into detail on these. I showed it last week, but it's better than cardboard and drywall to fill in these sections of the door. These will, these pieces of foam will definitely help keep down on the draft and uh, give these doors a little bit of insulating uh, properties that they didn't have before. So that's... That's a good start. So one thing that I've noticed in a lot of people's shops is that they have relatively poor lighting. With the prices of LED fixtures these days, I mean, it's worth the investment. It, you don't realize how bad lighting is in a shop until you put some good lighting in. I picked these up off eBay. This is the 120 volt, two foot by two foot for us here in the States, but I'm sure that you can get an equivalent for wherever you're at on the planet. Durable as well. The only ones I've ever had fail have been due to the roof uh, leaking water on them. But other than that, you know, nothing. These are obviously made for a drop ceiling with the hooks. But they have holes in them as well, so you could pretty much mount this about any way you can imagine. And they don't weigh much. So pick you up some lights. It'll make your life better. So a new piece of kit for the channel just arrived. Let's open it up together and take a look at it. Trying to try different options when it comes to audio. And that is an awful big box for such a small box. But I've got the Rode Wireless Go microphone. So I'll show you what I have been using. And uh, then we'll look at this and maybe give it a shot. So let's see what all... What all we get? Hmm. Little looks like a little carrying pouch. We get cable. Uh, two uh, dead cat wind noise reducers. Stuff you shouldn't eat. And both of the uh, both the receiver and the transmitter along with some nice cables for charging. They give you two of those. Hmm. So you can do them both at the same time. That's, that's good. So first off, let me say that I'm not affiliated with Rode whatsoever. All my mics that I have made by this company were bought just like anybody else would. Now this is my primary audio system. It is the Rode Link wired lapel mic. I really love this system. It sound, the audio on it is great. The only audio problems on my channel that you hear are caused by me in the editing process most of the time and not due to the microphone. 
But anyway, having a wired mic limits me quite a bit simply because of the work that I've been doing lately. Pretty strenuous, and I stress these cables quite a bit, and I've had two mic failures. Now, there's a warranty on these. As long as you go through the process, fill in the serial number on their website, and file it properly, proof of purchase, all that, Rhodes a great company. They're an Australian company, and within three days of filing a warranty claim on the mic, telling them, hey, I'm working in a strenuous environment, the cables are given out. I've had a new one two times so far within the last probably six months within three days, which is a great thing in my opinion. No questions asked. So it's a good company. They don't know I do YouTube, nothing like that. It's not They're not showing favoritism. Now, I did buy a couple accessories for this Rode Link system, which Rode Go system, which is does the same thing as this, except for it does not require the wired mic in order to pick up audio. It has a built-in microphone. This is the receiver. This is the transmitter. So you wear this one. This one goes on the camera. So you can collect audio directly from this, or you can plug in a microphone to this and use a lapel mic if you want to get tighter audio. It comes with a couple little wind socks that cover the mic if you're out in windy conditions. They send you two. I assume they think you'll knock these off, probably. There you go, just like that. I also bought the accessory that allows you to clip this on your shirt without having to have a seam to clip on, like the edge of a hat or you know the seam of your shirt. Uh, with this magnetic clip, it just slides on the back there, and then you can put this anywhere on your clothes you want, and it's held on by a magnet, which I thought was pretty neat, and I wanted to try that out. So me knowing myself pretty well, I went ahead and bought the screen protector for these also. So I'm going to put those on and I'm going to give this thing a shot. It's pretty out there. Definitely cold and snowy this morning. My wife got home last night and mentioned that her car was pulling to the right. She suspects that it's got a flat, and so do I. Actually, let's, from here I can see the car leaning. So let's go down there and see what the deal is. That's what I wanted to do this morning was fix a flat tire outside. So that's definitely flat. She said that she noticed the closer she got to home, the harder it would pull. So I think she must have hit something on her way here. Let's get an air tank, put some air in this. What is it with this car in flats, man? It seems like it's a weekly occurrence. Put some air in it, see if we can get it fixed so she can get it replaced. Oh, I can hear it leaking. That's not good. Good for finding a hole, not good for the tire.
It's a lot warmer in here than it is out there. So that wasn't very hard to find. Check that out. I mean, a piece of sheet metal or a piece of glass or something. This is NFG, unfortunately. This tire is not that old either. I mean, you see all the way down to the to the to the threads. You can't can't really fix that. Maybe a big patch on the inside, but you still got a tire that's compromised. Wow. So how bad would it be to have a flat tire on the side of the road and then your ugly little donut tire has a flat as well? It's always good to check these because they're almost always low, especially after a few years in the trunk. So the sealing in here made an absolute amazing difference on the way that you can put heat in here or how it holds the heat. So much better than I thought it would be. So after about almost a year, it's time to uncover the machines and start cleaning them up. Even though they've been sitting under tarps, that fine dust gets up under those tarps and gets all over them. And it's going to take a while to get these things Shaper. cleaned back and in a condition where I can use them without potentially damaging them. So I'm excited about it, but man, it's a huge job to clean all these machines back up. So I've got an easy two weeks of just machine cleaning that I'll have to do. The old shaper, she fared pretty well underneath that tarp, but I soaked her down with oil before I covered it up. But still, a machine like this, as big as it is, does not do well with rapid temperature changes. They tend to get water on them to condensate, and they'll rust no matter how hard you try to stop it. So. We got a lot to clean up.
let's take a second and talk about this polystyrene ceiling. Now, several people brought up the fact that it's a fire hazard, and it is. It's not necessarily designed to be used as a ceiling, as an exposed ceiling. You could easily use this stuff covered up as a ceiling and it would be fine. But the way that I have it, the polystyrene is exposed. Now this stuff is designed to be used in commercial buildings and residence. It is treated with a fire retardant, which means that it won't uh, continue a flame. You can light it up, but it should self-extinguish. I've heard people say that one spark and this is going to go up, and that's just not the case. Uh, this stuff's a lot harder to burn than what you would think, but it would not be a good environment in here if it did catch fire. So, is it something you'd want to use in your residence, in a place where you live or your children sleep? No, obviously not. But in a shop like this, you know, it just makes sense, at least for now. Now, is this place at a higher risk than it's been in the past because of this ceiling of catching fire? I would say no. Uh, this place was at an extreme risk of burning right before this project started and then about halfway through. But luckily it did not. Steve, what do you plan to do with that? Nothing. And uh, I'm not too concerned about this ceiling catching fire. You know, if this was a foundry and I did a lot of hot work, I would not have considered this. But, you know, for now, it'll work. It's an outbuilding and it's not next to anyone else's residence. It's not next to mine. And if this place was to catch on fire and burn, then maybe I would get some rest. I don't know. You know, not something you joke about. It's, it's really a serious business, but... I'm not at all concerned about this place burning. Although, anything's possible, right? So man, I'm glad to get this thing in the shop. Stoked, actually. This is my six inch thick, 24 inches wide by 36 inch long pink granite sterret surface plate. Now, this is a well-used plate. Around the outside, it does not look new, but I assure you the top surface on this, the only surface that matters, is brand new, and it was redone by sterret and certified. And since this thing was redone, the only thing that has ever sit on top of this plate has been this cardboard here. So. Brand new stone, and I'm excited to have it. Glad to have it in the shop and out from outside. So let's get this cardboard off of it, get the straps off of it, clean it up, have a look at it, shall we? So this thing's sitting outside. It's not a big deal, right? It's a piece of granite, but man, I'm glad to get it inside, get it cleaned up. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Let's see if I can get these straps off here. I'll probably have to jack up uh, this thing a bit so I can get these straps from around this stand.
So I want to touch on a subject that I've avoided for the last couple of months. The other day, a patron contacted me and said that his wife was concerned that by me closing up the shop so well that the squirrels wouldn't be able to get in here and hang out. And if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you'll have seen peanut, walnut, and hazelnut, the three squirrels that me and Elizabeth raised. Well, the truth is I have not seen peanut, walnut, or hazelnut in probably two months. Hence, I've avoided talking about it because I really adore those squirrels. And, uh, you know, it's just a subject that I've tried to avoid. They're out in the woods doing their thing. Squirrels are kind of funny. You know, they establish their own little territories. They don't want another squirrel right up next to them. So they probably ventured out into the woods and, you know, they don't need us anymore. So, you know, which is great. That's what we wanted the whole time was to raise them and let them go because squirrels aren't pets. Uh, although they are adorable, funny, make you laugh so hard that your sides hurt. And I don't get to do that very often. So they were a pleasure to have around. But uh, back when the shop was falling down, I didn't care if squirrels came in here and running around. What did it matter? Uh, but now that the shop's fixed up, I'm not going to have squirrels living in here. Uh, although I would let one come in and hang out with me for a bit, but I wouldn't let them live here. And if one shows up this spring, a baby that needs some help, you better believe I'll, uh, I'll raise another one. Me, Elizabeth Will. She's the one that, uh, she's the squirrel whisperer, not me. So that's the story. I haven't seen them. I'm sure they're fine. I wouldn't worry about them. They're squirrels and uh, they do their thing. They're perfectly capable of making it on their own. So that's it. There are no squirrels right now, unfortunately. There may be, you never know. So this old surface plate stand is gonna need some work. It's not holding the stone the way that it actually should be. It should be supported on three points and from the layout on the pads that are on, this stone has pads glued to the bottom of it. They're about a third of the way in and there's three of them. One, you know, about a third of the way in in the middle and then two evenly spaced about a third of the way in on the end. And it should be supported by those three points. So in the future, we'll have to address that. It's not the end of the world, right? We're not doing certified inspection work, but we want this to be right. So in the future, we'll modify this to where it holds this stone proper and give it a good paint job because it looks kind of crusty. So I'm constantly blown away at the generosity of the viewers of this channel. I have been since the conception of it. I've had viewers that have been with me from the beginning all the way up to now who have helped me in some way all along the way, which is very much appreciated. And the other day I was lifting the uh, press with the ratchet straps, which is not, you know, it's not recommended, but you use the tools that you have on hand that are, that'll do the job. So that's what I used. And a viewer of the channel contacted me over my email and said, I want to send you some proper lifting straps because you need some proper lifting straps. And it was, his name is Martin. He's from Germany. I'm not going to say his last name because I didn't ask him and because I'm not sure I'm capable of pronouncing it. But anyway, he got on Amazon, bought some straps, had them shipped directly to me. He didn't have to ship them all the way across the world, which was, which was very nice, and I appreciate that. And as you can see, I'm using them now, and we'll use these on into the future. I just did not have any, never took the time to try to invest in any, which is probably not the best move, but you know, you have to choose where your funds go. So I appreciate that more than you know. Simple lifting straps, but very helpful. So thank you very much, Martin. Uh, it is very much appreciated. And thank all of you who have helped me in any way whatsoever, just by simply viewing the video. So thank you. You guys are awesome. Well, I guess it's time to at least start addressing my dirty secret. And I want to share it with you. It's really not a secret, actually. I've showed it in passing, but it's definitely dirty, and that is my welding and grinding area. It's the dirtiest place in everybody's shop, but mine is particularly bad. This place has been under construction 
for the last year, and mine ended up being a catch-all for all the things that I didn't have a place for in the meantime during the rebuilding of this place, and I've dreaded this moment, but I have to address it, and I want to show it to you first. Well, here it is in all of its glory. Chainsaw parts, chainsaws, weed eaters, shovels, tooling, 40 taper for the Adcock Shipley that need to be cleaned up and organized. The problem is I don't have any shelving or anything. So at the moment, I'm working on it. Don't judge me, I've seen some of your shops. I know how it works. We'll get this straightened out and it'll be just fine. I got an oven down here, <laughs> computer power supplies, uh, repair manuals, power steering fluid, and a little bit of everything. <laughs> so where do you start, right? I guess at the top of the pile is probably a good place to start. So we've had this car for about 13 months now. A lot of you will remember I bought it totaled, repaired the damage, and got a rebuilt title on it, and have been driving it ever since, or my wife has, and I've been really pleased with it. It's been a pretty good little car, actually. Had some tire issues. I did put a starter on it. Now it's been a couple days since I pulled that, since we have the donut on there and I pulled that damaged tire off and I got a set of four new ones. Now the reason why I didn't replace just that one because it could have got away with that but then I would have had to deal with four tires all of which have different amounts of wear on them and then this one tire on the front which I showed actually on video I plugged probably a couple months ago I still have that to deal with so it just got four, four new tires. Now these are not the best tires that money can buy. In my experience, tires with our road conditions usually pick up nails or glass or you hit big potholes and it damages them long before they wear out. So we don't do a lot of traveling. So four economical tires. And glass doesn't care if you have Michelins or not. So I'm gonna take this to the local tire shop, get them to put these on, get them mounted and balanced. I just got in this thing and started it up and the battery light come on. So I'm assuming the alternator is now bad. I keep telling myself it's better than a car payment, and it is, but it's always something when you deal with an older car. So I'm getting ready to leave work after a long day, and uh, this happened. been a good week. It really has. So I pulled all of my tire repair supplies, my plug kit, out of the car, sitting on the shop floor because I was messing with my wife's car. Did I put it back in this car? No. So hopefully this has got a small hole and I can make it home. What is it with tires this week? So I'm going to be honest and say that I'm glad that this week's over. It has been a testing week. It's all been small stuff, but aggravating. I'm sure we all all have those weeks, and this was mine, I guess. So Some good things. Feeling better. This mic's working good. Got a lot cleaned up, although it's hard to tell by looking, and there's still a ton to go, but better than it was. Got the shaper going, got my surface plate in here, got a good plan to run airline in here. Still got a lot of details before I can start working in here, but it's getting close. Got to go get my siding. I'm going to try to get that done because after the siding's done and the lights are up, I still got eight more lights to put up. I can officially say that this shop, the shop itself, the structure is finished. Finished for now and that'll be a nice feeling. So I think that's it this week. Hopefully I don't run into any more headaches. Oh, did I mention that those four tires that I ordered for my wife's car, the ones that I showed here a few clips back, were the wrong ones. Yes, they were. I even went outside twice to check before I ordered them that I didn't order the wrong ones, still done it. It has been one of those weeks. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project. Much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blossom.
to break through.